Hey, Drywall Repairman here. Thanks for visiting my channel. I am a licensed drywaller. I do a lot of drywall repairs. Patches on ceilings, patches on walls, stress cracks. Simple do-it-yourself type drywall repairs you can do. So please watch and learn these videos and please subscribe. Thanks for viewing. Everybody, hey everybody, talk about air compressors and spray textures. For spray knockdowns, splatters, orange peels, and popcorn textures, Depending on your project type, you might need a higher SCFM, high pressure air compressor. This is a dual tank, my big dog. I use this for five sheets and over projects with a larger hopper or high ceilings. I need the high pressure, high SCFM so it can keep up with my workload. Larger projects, whole houses and stuff, you definitely need bigger rigs, but this is for five sheets, maybe to 10, 20 sheet type project, remodel projects. I'll use one of these high SCFMs. Regular patch jobs, I use a little pancake sprayer. This one works perfect. So these are the go-to ones you always see at the big stores. This one's about, I'd say, $75 to $100. You always see these ones. I bought this when I had issues with this one a long time ago. I used it a couple times at a jobs. I wasn't a big fan with the new regulator valve here. I had issues with the spray being consistent. It is a new tool. Of course, when you use tools daily, daily, daily with the air compressor, you pretty much get them dialed in to the exact spray pattern you want, the adjustments you need to do. So you don't want to just start spraying blind. You always want to practice on something until you get your pattern consistent with your pressure. Um, this is my favorite go-to one. This is called a spray mantis. They don't really sell these anymore in the stores, but sometimes you'll get lucky. If you can find you a spray of mantis, old school spray of mantis, this is the best hopper ever. If you do find a used one, you just want to make sure this bounces back, make sure the O-rings in here is good. Sometimes you have to clean them up, sand them up, get them clean, change out the O-rings and oil them up, and they're good to go. The, you want a, definitely a pressure valve here. But the spray of mantis is the best hopper I've ever owned. I probably own this one for at least 15 years the only issues I've had with it over the years you know you have to start rebuilding them so with other parts other hoppers you know you have to change the o-rings sometimes like that that's why I keep these extra parts around just in case sometimes it's cheaper just to go out and buy a new hopper but like I said the new hoppers they have now are these ones and I'm not a big fan of that one I have it just in case but my go-to now for bigger projects I'll use this one this setup you know five sheets or more for most of my repair work I'll use that setup for hoses I like to use 25 foot air compressor hoses this is the one I prefer this is a good year heavy duty but it's heavy I like these ones they don't tangle they're lightweight the reason I like to use 25 foot hoses is because they don't get tangled and they're easier to braid up when you're done with the job if I need to extend it to 50 foot then I'll just add two but the good rule of thumb is a 25 foot, this, and then it's easy to carry from room to room, especially when you're doing patchwork. If you're doing a larger job, you know, maybe you want to just set up in one room and just run the hose throughout the house, you can do that too, but you'll need more hoses. And sometimes the bigger hoses get in the way, they get tangled, crimped as you're spraying. So that's why I like to use the little hoses. But these are basic spray hoppers. I know there's other ones, maybe Harbor Freight and stuff like that. I always use name brand tools. This is Hide, like I said, Hide tools is great. And these are the ones you can get at the stores. This is the most common one. If you can find a used spray mantis on Craigslist or something like that, definitely buy one of those, it's worth it. I've actually got that one for $30 used and it's way better than this $80, $90 one. So all the fittings are the same. Basically you get three fittings. The big fitting is for a heavy knockdown or popcorn. The medium fitting is for like splatters or maybe a light knockdown. And then the small fitting is for orange peels or a thin splatter. Basic tools. You always want a strainer. This is a basic strainer. We use this to strain our muds. I use my joint compounds. I strain it into the hopper. I strain my muds in the hopper. Basically that takes all the boogers and the goobers out of the mud. You have to do this with orange peels and you have to do it with splatters. If your mud's kind of chunky and doesn't look like cream, then you definitely have to strain it. Old mud, you definitely have to strain. 
So I definitely recommend always straining your orange peels and your splatters. You necessarily don't have to strain your knockdowns, but go ahead and strain it anyways. Take the extra time because when you go to knock down, if you get a goober in your texture and you go to knock it down, it's going to scratch. So that's why we strain it to take all the goobers out. But these are just basic tools. If you're just doing a small project, just get you a pancake sprayer. I know on, on the stores they sell those cans of spray texture. Never buy those cans of spray. Maybe if you're just fixing a small hole in a rental property or something, just a quick fix, sure. But for a professional quality, you got to have a spray. Whenever you're done using your tools, you always want to drain the air out of the tanks. I like to spray a lubricant on it, like a WD-40 or something. On all these things here you want to get WD-40 on everything inside the hoses inside your air compressor fittings basically spray everything with WD-40 a lot of guys say not to do this but hey I've never had any problems basically it's good for storage it keeps the mud if the mud will flake off and wash off and it keeps everything lubed especially if you're going to storm long time I like to spray the oil down inside there get it in here you just want to make sure everything's nice and lubed up. Basically, it's like armor all on your tools. Keep some mud off of them. Your air compressor hoses, you want to spray spray oil down inside there. Basically, keep everything oiled. That's why I keep this around. A lot of guys say don't do this, but hey, I've been doing drywall for over 25 years, and I've always done this and never had any issues. That's why my tools stay clean. I've used these jobs thousands of times tools of thousands of times thousands of jobs made me a lot of money but I want to keep my investment clean and looking new I don't want a bunch of dirty tools unworking tools nothing's worse when you go to job and you go to spray and then this sticks so you want to keep this lever clean oiled up clean you want to keep these clean they should bounce back if they don't bounce back sometimes you have to replace the spring and the o-rings in these but keep everything oiled up cheap can like this was two or three bucks WD-40 you gotta spend five six bucks whatever you prefer you just keep everything lubed up and then I can store them I can store them for a long time and the, the the oil might collect a little bit of dust on top of it but you just rinse it off you always want to rinse out your hoppers before you put mud in it of course to get the oil out of it but just rinse them off and then they're ready to go for the next job either tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now so now they're ready to be stored away and ready for the next job the next day. But I hope this video was helpful. I am a licensed drywaller. These are my tips. This is what I do. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has an opinion, of course. But this is what a professional licensed drywaller does with basic tools from spray, drywall repairs, to larger projects.